The College Football Experience Ball State Cardinals 2022 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presented by WinBet. Bet $50 at WinBet. Get $200 in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit winbet.com. That's W-Y-N-N-Bet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. You already play fantasy on Sleeper, but now you can win cold, hard cash with their over-under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone to join the SGPN group and Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. That's sleeper.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by us. Yes, the SGPN app is live in the App Store and Google Play Store. It is free to download it. It is your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. So grab that thing today and let it ride. This is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Colby swinging Dan to base Dan, a.k.a. Pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> Here we are, Ball State Cardinal fans. Let's talk Ball State. Let's talk a lot of, you know, look, the Cardinals are fun. They're a fun team. Drew Plitt, the days of Drew Plitt are over, but we got a lot of good football to talk about with the upcoming season. I'm not going to get Muncie out in the middle of nowhere without my co-host. Give it up for the DFS God himself. The rooftop RPA drinking, home brew making, tobacco road living, the free lock giving. Former, former Herndon Basketball League MVP. Give it up for NC Nick in the place to be. There we go. What's going on, man? Maction time. I love it. Gotta love Maction time. And and look, I mean, I, they I, they should do more Tuesday and Wednesday night games. I, I didn't. I'm not seeing that many this year. I feel like is it is it less? I petition that they should start week one with Tuesday and Wednesday games. Why wait for November or something? Do it from the get go. Come on. I. I a hundred percent believe that you are correct. Um, so here we are, man. We're talking, uh, we're talking some good old ball state football. Mike knew. Well, actually before I happen to Mike, let's go do this. This is the ball state Cardinals. They've been to two straight bowl games. You can't just come at them and think they're terrible. Remember the days of what Nate Davis, where they went 12 and two or whatever. This is a this is a legendary program. Pete Lembo had had a win in ten and going ten and three in 2013. Mike New in 2020 had him at seven and one. And they won the Arizona Bowl. You don't win the Arizona Bowl without being a silent team. Shout out to the Ball State Cardinals. <laughs> You did with you did what you could with uh, the Ball State Cardinals football history, which um, Rodney Harrison. There you go. It's <laughs> it's a little lacking. They don't have the best uh, traditions at Ball State. Not the not a long running uh, period of su- success or anything to uh, pinpoint. Well, when I think of Ball State and you're looking at the history, it's like this. Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. But more mm. often than not, mm, more it of might the latter. Be shit. But hold on, I mean. <laughs> It, since the year 2000, they do have two double-digit win seasons, uh, and they might have had a third one had 2020 not been COVID because they went 7-1. and one. Uh, Yeah, this program is tough, though. You go back and look at all the coaches, you know, th- you know they've been playing, playing ball up there in Muncie, Indiana since 1924 with Paul Billy Williams, all right? Uh, but 
they have had some tough times. They did have an undefeated season in 65. And I know they're still mm. talking about that at Muncie, Indiana. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so national champions in 1965 in my book. Um, here we go, though. I mean, look, last year, not a terrible year. I, I actually, I, I really think Mike knew probably gets the most out of his teams. He's still 28 and 41 as a head coach in Muncie. And he used to be a quarterback at Ball State. What do you make of Mike New? No, he's done a good job there. It's a, it's a very tough place to win. One of the toughest in the country, probably. Now, I will say, coming on the heels of that 7-1 and one, uh, COVID season, I think people were expecting a little bit more out of the Cardinals last year. They had a, the fifth-year quarterback in Plitt. They had a defense, a very experienced, senior-laden defense last year. And look, I mean, whenever you go six and six and you make a bowl game, granted they lost the bowl game, but I, I, that's still a, a successful year in Muncie. But overall, I think people were thinking, you know, that they were going to do more a yeah. season ago. True. And they got their ass kicked. Now, now getting an ass, your ass kicked by Penn State. OK, right. They also got their ass kicked by Central Michigan and Wyoming. Now, you could also say, though, that they were in that Toledo game, only lost by 10. Yeah. Lost by seven to Miami, Ohio. And lost by one at the MAC champions, uh, the Northern Illinois Huskies. So they were close to being like a nine win team, you know, like not that far away now, but their big test. Yeah, I get it. They had a bunch of super seniors coming back last year. There was reason to believe they'd be better than what they did, but they still made a bowl. Yeah. And I think if you're a ball state football fan, you that's a win. That's right. a win. I think you go Agreed. bowling. That's a fucking win. Mike new, I think is a solid head coach. I know you look at the record and say, Hey, it's dog shit, but two straight bowls. Can he get the Cardinals to a third straight bowl? We're going to be talking about that. And, well, that's a uh, perfect question because the over under sits at five and a half. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we will be going game by game on the schedule here. And by the way, hopefully you're subscribed on YouTube because we're breaking down all 131 teams on the college football experience. You'll have a solo episode for every single team in the land where we evaluate the roster and we break down what they've done in the recruiting, transfer portal, all that good stuff, and then we key in on uh, each and every game on the schedule and if they're going to hit their over-under stat projection or, or win projection. So, uh, yeah, it should be, should be fun talking Ball State Cardinals here. Um, and if you, look, if you look at last year, if you, if you look really, uh, well, they got six starters back on offense from last year. Last year, they were 94th in the nation in scoring offense. They were 94th in the nation in rushing offense. They were 89th in passing offense. But here's, here's the thing you circle that's got to improve. 110th in total offense. Considering what they were bringing back, super senior Drew Plitt and some other key guys, that's not good. It's yeah, not good and, and only 46% of the offensive production, which ranks 117th in the country. Yeah, uh, offense coordinator Kevin Lynch got his got his uh, work cut out for him. I believe he played quarterback at Ball State too. But uh, and also uh, Kevin Lynch wasn't he a uh, Golden Gopher, Charlotte Hornet back in the day? But uh, not UNC the same guy, Kevin right? Lynch. Not the but but uh, this I'm, Kevin. I'm thinking George Lynch. <laughs> yeah, George Lynch. There's a lot of Lynch, John Lynch. But no, uh, Kevin Lynch. I think he might have. I think he played quarterback at Ball State. If memory serves okay. me correct. Um, they got their work cut outs because they they just have six returning starters. Uh. John Paddock going to head out to the paddock down there in Muncie, Indiana, pick a few winners. Uh, well, John Paddock, he's waited his turn and now very inexperienced. The one game last year he got some burn in was that at Wyoming blowout where he went 18 of 26 for 132 yards and a pick. It's not horrible. Not great either. <laughs> uh, I think this is his fourth year in Muncie though. If you want to look on the bright side, the guy's, been around the program and uh, the coaching staff for a long time. But and I think and, like, and Drew I think, Plitt is that's big shoes to fill. And I think Wyoming had a decent defense last year to be sure. Yeah. Uh, Carson Steele is back at running back. I know that sounds like a porn actor's name, but trust me, <laughs> he, he can play. He's back. Uh, <laughs> and two of three receivers are back. Jason Jackson, and yo, Heinz Tyler played yo, Heinz and DFS a bunch. Um, they are breaking in a new tight end. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be Brady Hunt, I think. Uh, three of five starters back on the offensive line, led by left tackle Corey Stewart. Both tackles are turning what you'd like to see. And a center. But, 
and a yeah. center. The yeah, guards but... are normally the weakness. Uh, yeah. Like, if you told me you could have any position that you're replacing, I think you want it to be guards. Easier to plug, definitely. Yes. Uh, so there's that. Defensively, Tyler Stockton, 85th in the nation in scoring defense, 95th in rushing defense, 91st in pass defense, 96th in total defense. It's not terrible, but it's not good. Yeah. And this is where it also gets bad because they only bring back 37% of their defensive production. Three starters. 127th in the nation, which is fifth to last. So uh, on both sides of the ball, they lose a lot. Yeah. uh, One of three starters back on the D line. And that is just Tavian Woodard. Who's back. Uh, One of four linebackers and Clayton call and one of four in the secondary. Amichi Uzendima, the second he is back, um, probably butchering that name. Um, it's it's hard to get excited uh, if you're a Cardinal fan. I know Patty C loves Ball State. We should have got him on this episode. But um, it's tough when you look at that the, defensively and to think, I don't know what they'll be doing now. Well, I don't know. Let's talk transfer portal in a second here. But I got to get us paid on the college football experience. So I want to tell folks that. The College Football Experience Ball State Cardinal Season Preview is brought to you by WinBet. Bet $50 at WinBet and get $200 in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit winbet.com. That's W-Y-N-N-Bet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. You already play fantasy on Sleeper, but now you can win cold, hard cash with their over-under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone to join the SGPN group and sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. That's sleeper.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by good old Manscaped. Gentlemen, Father's Day is right around the corner. And our friends at Manscaped are here to ensure that all father figures out there are looking daddy material come this June. Uh, Manscaped's performance package 4.0 which includes their signature lawnmower 4.0 is the perfect bundle to tackle any and all old man hair from head to toe this right here is no dad joke treat him and uh and and treat yourself while you're at it and join the four million men worldwide who trust manscape with their exclusive offer get 20 percent off plus free shipping with the promo code sgp at manscape.com trust me his dad bod will thank you people uh, all right. And we're also brought to you by athletic greens and their AG one supplement. Yes. Uh, so what is this stuff with one delicious scoop of AG one? You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day. Right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, your aging, all those things. And it costs less than $3 a day. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by IP Vanish. Did you know that browsing online using incognito mode doesn't actually protect your privacy? That's right. Without added security, you might as well be giving away all your private data to hackers, advertisers, your ISP, and other prying eyes. That's why here at SGPN Studios, we use IP Vanish VPN, and it makes it truly easy to stay private and secure on the internet by encrypting 100% of your data. That means your private details, your emails, your passwords, your commu- your communications, your, your browsing history, all will be completely shielded from falling in the wrong hands. Even your physical location stays hidden. It makes you virtually invisible online. So IP Vanish is offering an incredible 70% off their yearly plan for our listeners with a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's like getting nine months for free, people. All right, so go to ipvanish.com slash SGP and use that promo code SGP and claim 70% off your savings. That's ipvanish.com slash SGP. All right, we are back talking Ball State Cardinals. Kaka! All right, that's what the Cardinal fans are saying this season. NC Nick, did you know that? I knew that, yes. (laughs) Kaka. Exactly. I'm looking here at the uh, good old ball state in the transfer portal. And well, uh, brought in a couple pieces, but it sure looks like they might've lost more than they gained. Yeah. Huh? Ty Evans, who got some burn the past couple of years. He's gone. Uh, Jarrett France is gone. A wide receiver tight end. Drayton Charlton Perrin is gone. Uh, Ray Quinn Lee is gone at running back. 
uh, wide receiver Chevy uh, Benson's gone. Uh, Jerron Thompson at corner. I mean, what they basically brought in. I mean, even like their their kicker was pretty good. He's now at Minnesota. Um, they did get Kyle King on the defensive line, a transfer from Michigan State. They also added a punter from Indiana and Chase Wyatt, a offensive lineman, Bo Taylor from UCLA with Chip Kelly. And I think this is the one we circle here. Jaquan Amos, a safety from Iowa State. I'm seeing, I think he's going to be penciled in as a starter. And uh, wide receiver Amir Abdul Rahman from Vanderbilt. You know, okay. You're somewhat being active in the transfer portal there, despite losing. Uh, it seems like a decent amount, but what would you would you say that's a win? I think it's kind of a wash, right? Yeah, I, like I said, I mean they're definitely getting a little bit of help on the defensive side, bringing that defensive tackle from Michigan State and the safety from Iowa State. I think you probably plug those those guys in as starters. Offensive lineman from UCLA too is probably going to be the starter. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, as long as he's a guard, you know, yeah. uh, and I think he is an interior offensive lineman. So that's probably why they, they he was sought after. But losing Ty Evans hurts and they also lost some uh, skill position guys. So I think you're right. I think it's fairly safe to say it's a wash. Yeah. And uh, so let's 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 hop into this here because the win total is at five and a half. And you have a column that is going to be written over at sportsgalingpodcast.com. Folks, get the SGPN app. You'll have access to all of the columns that all that we put out, but you let alone that all of NC Nick's writings over there. He's like a uh, Edgar Allan Poe when it comes to the Mac. Right? <laughs> exactly. Now, uh, uh, yeah. So it'll give you the, my, you know, my side over or under on every win total team in the Mac, including ball state. I feel pretty strong about ball state too. When you look at the schedule as a whole before, I know you like to go week by week, but as a whole, uh, a couple good things, a couple bad things. Uh, first off, the the West division of the MAC is by far the harder division these days. The East has kind of gone on hard times a little bit. Uh, and then in conference, uh, Ball State, unfortunately for them, they miss Akron and Bowling Green. And actually, the three teams they get from the East are the three teams that the, the top three teams from a year ago: uh, Kent State, Miami of Ohio, and Ohio. But on the positive side, out of conference, they scheduled wisely. They didn't pull a Kent State. They're not maniacs. Yeah. You yeah, know, exactly. out of conference, there's the one game at Tennessee, which is your paycheck game. You lose. But then the other games are, you could argue, all winnable. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Thursday, September 1st, they are at Tennessee. So I'm going to go ahead and say head and hooker throws for over 300. Uh, and to the Vols route the Cardinal in yes. Knoxville, correct? Yes. Yes, correct. Week two, and, and this is where I think it gets interesting. And I think this is, you know, I know you feel f- pretty strongly uh, about about Ball State this year. I think it's one of your, one of the ones you like better, right? In the Mac. in the Mac, I mean, it, you know, <laughs> the wacky Mac is is tough to project from year to year. Uh, but yeah, I felt pretty good on you know the. We, we'll get to it, but uh, yeah, I mean, look, week two, Western Michigan, especially early in the year, new quarterback, LB is. In the pros, I guess, maybe in a training camp yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, um, that's a winnable game at home, definitely. I think it's a huge game because it I is. can build a case. I can build a case right here. Um, and I think they're, the, you know, when I first looked at this schedule, I said, you know, I'm, you know, I, I you went under, I, I think I'm going to go under on this, but I can make a case that if they win this game. Yeah. I think they could start three and one and potentially four and one, considering they lost by one at Northern Illinois, which is a, one of the hardest places to play at. It, probably the hardest school to, to, to win at in the Mac. Um, well, look, it's so a week three. They beat Murray State. So I, I do have them at two and one. Yeah, and, I'm saying and, that if they beat West, you're the beating Western Michigan. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give them the, the W there. It's in Muncie. I'll, I'll do it, I guess. It's kind of a 50 50 oh, game. Yeah. Certainly a 50 50 game. Uh, most games in the Mac are, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but so at I, home with you know, I mean, yeah, both teams have new quarterbacks. It's, it's certainly a 50 50 game, but it's it's winnable. So, sure, I'll give it to them. And then Murray State. Now, Murray State was what six and five in the SCS. I know, I know our friend, uh, you know, Frank Beamer and uh, Bud Bud Foster, you know, ties to Murray State, the but, racers. Um, if they can, I think they're going to be two and one. If they, if I, I shouldn't say I think they're going to be two and one. I have them at two and one. Uh, the the Western Michigan game is truly a 50 50 game. Yeah. I think they beat Murray State, but then they go down to Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia for week four. And look, it, Georgia Southern, 
is replacing the triple the, the option and going to a pass offense with Kyle Van Trees transferring in from Buffalo, who they have familiar familiarity facing Kyle Van Trees. But Beat him I year. almost I almost expect Georgia Southern to struggle this year. Now I still think Georgia Southern still with struggling might still be better than Ball State, but I kind of like the schedule. If that, I, I mean, do you do you feel strongly that Georgia Southern is just going to beat them? No, um, it's another 50 50 game and I don't have ball state winning both of the September 50 50 games. So to answer your question, I have them two and two entering October. I'll say they lose at Georgia Southern. Okay. I mean, I'll join you on that. I gave it to Western Michigan before. So two and two they're home to Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois won the Mac a season ago as maybe the luckiest team in the history of college football. If you go back and look at their schedule from a season ago, folks, if you think I'm joking, well, first off, uh, Lombardi's gone. They, of course they had a lucky season with, with uh, Vince Lombardi's, uh, you know, grand, grand, what great grandson at, at Rocky Lombardi. Yeah. But if you look at last year, they have a one point win, a seven point win, a two point win, an eight point win, a one point win, a one point win, and a six point overtime win. This team might not be that good this year. <laughs> it's hard to do that two years in a row. And especially when you're replacing the quarterback spot. Now, I know they're bringing in the Temple transfer at quarterback. Um, but in Muncie, Indiana, this is so f- – this is hard, man. This is a I think, hard uh, – Let's remember how much Ball State is losing this year. Uh, Northern Illinois is not losing anywhere near as much. I have the Huskies here. Uh <laughs> I mean, I, you could definitely make a case where they're four and one to start the start the season. They're really not. Think... They're they're not winning four games in a row here. I, it's not going to happen. No you way. know what? Give me Ball State to take down the Huskies. It's in Muncie. Thomas Hammock's luck's going to run out this so year. So where? Right? What are you? Are you three and two? Or are you four I'm and three one and right two. now? I'm, three I'm and two, two and three. Now the following week they're at Central Michigan. Two and four. Yes, this is a flat out loss because Central Michigan I think might be the best team in the MAC this year. Uh. So I got him at what three and, and three, three there. And then they're home to UConn. Now this is an interesting one because you have Jim Mora jr. Who's a friend of the program and Jim Mora jr. Has brought in some nice talent. Who'd you take in this game? I got to know. Did you, did you go? Did you go? I think, I think we lost him for a second here, but uh, I, I'm curious if he went with the UConn Huskies or, you know, UConn was terrible, but, Jim Moore is bringing some instant credibility via the transfer portal. Uh, did you take UConn to win this one, NC Nick? You know, it, it's not, sometimes it's, it's easier for me to break it into groups. Like there's two, there's two back-to-back home games here, UConn and, and Eastern Michigan. I have Ball State winning one of those. I had them splitting this, and I have them at three and five after and, eight. I mean, I will do the same. And so, yeah, I so would I say have I have them – Beating UConn, losing to Eastern Michigan. Okay, so I have them at four then if if we do that. And then they get a bye week, and they're at Kent State and at Toledo. They lose both those, right? Agreed. So I have them at three and seven. So there you go, my under hits. Okay. Uh, well, the remaining games are at, are at home in Muncie against Ohio, which I think is a winnable game. And then at Miami, Ohio, <laughs> I'll have them split that. I'll have them four and eight on the year. Uh, look, just they, they 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 just lost too much. It's a rebuilding year. You're telling me this team went six and six in the regular season last year with a fifth year quarterback with a ton of experience on defense, and they're going to ha- have the same record this year with with so many new faces on both sides of the ball. I don't but- see it. Five game win is is their best case scenario. I'm on the under. Last year. Out of conference, they had Penn State. They were at Penn State, at Wyoming, and 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 got the Army Black Knights as well. I think that that is a harder out of conference schedule than this year. They're lucky they're getting Georgia Southern. If Georgia Southern was running the the, the what they were two years ago, Georgia Southern win by twenty. But uh, you caught them in a transition year. What does uh, Samuel Jackson say in uh, Pulp Fiction? You caught me in a transitional state, right? <laughs> and uh, they still went two and two non-con last last year, though, because they beat Army. Do but I think they can go three and one this year. Uh, uh, you know that's not that far fetched. UConn, Murray State, Georgia Southern, and then Tennessee. Even if they go three and one, I still have them winning five games total. 
Look, I got him at five and seven too, but I could, I could, I think this, this is a very interesting team. I do not feel strongly about this one because I think you can make the case. So you I'll can go ahead make and, the I'll case go- they could win seven or eight. I don't, I don't see that happening. I mean, once again, it all boils down to they were six and six last year in the regular season. The only for sure losses for me are at Tennessee, at Central Michigan, at Kent State, and at Toledo. Maybe you can talk me into at Miami, Ohio is a for sure loss. It's the Mac. I mean, nothing's a for sure loss, <laughs> but you play the law of, of averages and you group a couple games together and say, okay, they'll split here, might drop these two. Uh, I mean, how many for sure, how many surefire wins are there? One Murray, Murray State, maybe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's it's is very similar to another preview we just did, Arkansas State. You're telling me you need to get six wins to cash an over ticket, and you only see one surefire win on the schedule. I don't like those odds. <laughs> but, but dude, we're also giving a lot of credit to UConn. We're you know like I mean UConn was losing every game by fifty last year. You know what I mean? Like I know it's yeah. Jim Mora Jr. and we're excited about that, but uh, <laughs> you know it might take a little bit of time. Sure, fair enough. I mean, I, you you could definitely argue Ball State is ahead of UConn right now, and and the game's at home. So yeah. that's a fair, fair statement. I don't want to come down on the even Cardinals like the too, Ohio too Bobcats. They were about a three win team a year ago. Hey, this game's in Muncie. What I mean, I get it. Uh, Ball State loses a lot, but still, you know, they were kind of bet they were better than Ohio last year within the Mac. Yeah, so I just think I expect some regression from Ball State. If, if you look at Mike New, you know, the COVID year kind of put him on the map, and then but everything was building up to last year. And last year they had the roster to do more than six and six, and they didn't. What are you gonna you know? do if they if they beat Tennessee week one? <laughs> I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna rip up my under ticket. That's what I'm yeah. gonna do. But you know, now we can say because you've already previewed Akron, and uh, so my two favorite plays in the conference is the over on Akron, the under on Ball State. I love the my my favorite play is Akron over. Um. I cannot commit to Ball State. I do not feel passionately about this over but, or under. But, I took the but under. That's your lean. Okay. I'm taking the under. I think they're gonna. I think they're a five and seven team. But man, I mean, it would not surprise me if they were seven and five. Not surprise me one bit. I think they're actually gonna fall somewhere between five and seven. Hmm. Maybe four and seven. Four and seven. Let's go four and seven. I would say between four and and, and five. <laughs> You're giving you're giving a lot of credit. I mean, look, I'm an Eastern Michigan guy, right? I love Chris Creighton. I love what the Eagles are doing, but I also am smart enough to know every one of those fucking games he plays in is like a one point game, and he's yeah. been doing. He's like Thomas Hammock over the past like seven years. Like they lose a lot of the close ones too. I mean, they always play a ton of close games, right? But and they're replacing some. I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I I can't wait for action this this year. I'm on the under. I'm joining the UNC Nick. I'm not going to argue with you too much because I did take the under. But you can check out NC Nick's article over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com and on the SGPN app. Uh, and here we go, folks. I mean, subscribe to the College Football Experience because you better believe it. We're arguing Ball State's uh, performance this year already. That's why you want to subscribe because we give the same amount of attention to Ball State as we do to Alabama. All right. So buckle up, check it out. Uh, we get, if you have another favorite team out there, we're going to get to it. Cause we're going through all 131 FBS teams. Get subscribed on YouTube, subscribe to us. Uh, what Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. If you give us a five-star review, take a photo, a screenshot, they say, or fuck, I don't care. Take it, get a Polaroid. All right. I don't care. Uh, show me it though. Borrow a friend's phone, take a photo of the Polaroid, and find me on Twitter at the Colby D or on the college football experience on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Show us that review and we'll send you a college football experience t-shirt brand new. It's not, this is not from the Salvation Army. All right. Uh, so do that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk Mac football all season long. You can find NC Nick on Twitter at NC underscore N I C K. You can find Patty C on Twitter at Patty C831. You can find the Sports Gambling Podcast Network on Twitter at the SGP Network. Give them all a follow. And also remember me, Patty C, and NC Nick. We also host the college basketball experience. We love to talk Ball State hoops. We love to talk Indiana Hoosiers hoops. We love to talk Notre Dame fighting. Mike Bray 
hoops. I'm wearing um, a Dayton Flyers hat, all right? Yeah, maybe that's maybe maybe you went to Dayton. We cover we talk college basketball year round there. And look, we also host the USFL gambling podcast, as we know uh that spring season about to come to an end after next week. And uh then we we head to the USFL playoffs, which is in Canton, Ohio. Maybe you're heading there. Maybe you're heading there. So check out all three of those, the USFL Gambling Podcast, the College Basketball Experience, the College Football Experience, the Sports Gambling Podcast. We got you covered. Uh, all of our podcasts. There's so many great ones out there. Golf Gambling Podcast, NASCAR Gambling Podcast, uh, so, so many NHL Gambling Podcast. Check them all out. They're all fantastic. So do that. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's enjoy another season of Mike New Football. I think he's a pretty solid coach. So, all right, folks, this is the college football experience, Ball State Cardinal style. Kaka! You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here.